Kansas. We are suing President Biden and his Department of Education, uh, challenging the legality of his latest student loan forgiveness plan. Last summer, as many of you know, the Supreme Court struck down Biden's uh, illegal student loan plan by a 6-3 decision, uh, holding that it was in violation of federal law and contrary to the terms of federal law. That suit was brought by six states, of which Kansas was one. In spite of that loss, and in completely brazen fashion, the president pressed ahead anyway and implemented another version of the student loan forgiveness program. The president even boasted, quote, the Supreme Court blocked it, but that didn't stop me, end quote. Not since the Civil War era has our country seen a president attempt to defy the Supreme Court in this manner. President's, president Biden's new student loan forgiveness program is slightly smaller than the old one, at least for now, but it's just as illegal. The old plan forgave $430 billion in student debt, while the new one forgives over $158 billion, $157 billion, and counting. Uh, and I say I'm counting because the Biden administration has yet to accurately calculate what the full extent of this taxpayer burden in the new student loan plan will be. And they have to acknowledge that they haven't accurately calculated it. So the numbers keep growing week by week. The law simply does not allow President Biden to do what he wants to do. Congress created the student loan program in 1965 with the Higher Education Act. And in that original act, the Congress addressed the situations under which a student loan could be forgiven or canceled. And it said that it could only be done in four circumstances. First, people who go on to serve in public ser service jobs that typically pay lower. Second, borrowers who become permanently disabled and are un unable to work. Third, borrowers co who go bank bankrupt. And fourth, uh, borrowers who were effectively swindled uh, by the higher education institution. No other individuals are eligible to have their student loans forgiveness forgiven under the Higher Education Act. Well, the Biden administration's new plan extends partial or full loan forgiveness to the vast majority of borrowers, people who are not included in those four limited categories. Now, the first time the Biden administration tried this move in the 2022 version of Biden's student loan forgiveness, we'll call that version 1.0, they did so by claiming that they were simply modifying the terms of the student loans, which federal law does include the term modify. The Supreme Court emphatically rejected that attempt to, quist, to twist the terms of federal law. This time, the Biden administration is making an even weaker argument. They are claiming that they are simply changing the terms of loan repayment, which the law does allow. Now, when you and I ask for a change of terms of loan repayment from our bank, we know what that means. That means maybe we extend the loan from five years to 10 years. Maybe we go from an adjustable rate to a fixed rate. Maybe the rate itself is changed. That is a change in the terms of loan repayment. But none of us believe that the change of, in terms of loan repayment means we get to cancel the loan and not pay back the principal at all. That is exactly what's happening here. For the majority of the student loan holders or the, the student loan bar borrowers, uh, the, the repayment will be zero. They will owe no further uh, amount uh, to repay their debt. Uh, this erases the loans completely. It's not just changing the terms of lo loan repayment, it is canceling loan repayment, and that is against the law. Every bit as much as the first version of the plan was not truly modifying student loans. Uh, there's another point here, too. Uh, the Supreme Court made clear in the 2023 decision that only Congress can make such a major change in national policy. Only Congress can decide that the four limited circumstances of loan cancellation set by Congress in 1965 are now changed and that loans can be canceled across the majority uh, of student loans. That is a major question and the Supreme Court in recent decisions has enunciated the major questions doctrine which says that executive agencies cannot take it upon themselves to answer these major questions. Only Congress, the legislative branch of government, can answer these major policy questions Agencies cannot usurp that authority and do so themselves. Now, aside from the fact that the Biden student loan forgiveness plan version 2.0 is just Ill as illegal as the first one was, it's profoundly unfair as well. And I think it would be difficult for anyone to answer why it is fair to transfer uh, money from those who have, left, have less to those who have more. It forces taxpayers, including people who did not go to college because they couldn't afford it, 
and people who worked their way through, the coll through college and people who saved money and then went to college. It forces them to pay for the student loans of those who ran up exorbitant student debt. That's simply unfair. As, par as a parent scraping to set aside money for my own girls to go to college and uh, watching them work their way through college or work to save money for college, I see this unfairness directly. And I think most Americans do as well, regardless of party, by the way. In conclusion, President Biden is defying the ruling of the United States Supreme Court while also seizing power from Congress. Fortunately, in America, we live in a constitutional republic and the courts can strike down an illegal or unconstitutional executive act. That is what we are asking the court to do in this case. And we look forward to seeing the president's attorneys in court. I'd be happy to take your questions. Um, I do not have an exact answer for you. My understanding is that people who thought they were getting their loan forgiven in, say, 2023 were notified by the Department of Education that, in fact, their loan was still in place and still had to be uh, paid off. I, I am aware that letters are going out right now under the second version of the Biden plan telling people that their loans are forgiven. And uh, indeed, in Kansas, they've already sent out letters indicating that millions of dollars in loans have, have been forgiven. And uh, they are, in fact, they, they made an announcement, I think it was this morning or last night, uh, in anticipation of this case, uh, celebrating how many millions of dollars in loan forgiveness had already been issued in Kansas. Well, that is illegal, and uh, we will be asking the courts to uh, enjoin that action. So that begs the question of why are they doing this? Is it the Supreme Court's already slapped our hand? I think that's a possibility. It could be purely coincidence that the first student loan plan happened in 2022 in that election cycle. And it could be purely coincidence that the president is uh, celebrating and making public statements about this student loan plan in the election cycle of 2024. Then again, it might not be pure coincidence. Why would Kansas have to do that? You know, there are uh, a, a group of states that uh, have basically joined together uh, and acted whenever the Biden administration has uh, crossed the boundaries of federal law or the Constitution. Uh, and unfortunately, that's happened a significant number of times. And so uh, the states typically divide the labor. So you've seen the state of Texas, for example, take the lead in a number of immigration-related cases concerning the crisis at the border. You've seen the state of West Virginia take the lead in a number of uh, environmental cases challenging the EPA. Um, Kansas is stepping up now, and uh, we, we agreed to take the mantle, mantle and lead the charge on this one. And, you know, it's really uh, a case like this is, is complex civil litigation. It involves a lot of attorneys doing the work, including the people standing behind me. And so uh, it makes sense that different states would uh, carry the load forward. No, you're certainly uh, reflecting, uh, you know, what a lot of people observing the courts think. They look at so-called conservative circuits and so-called progressive circuits or liberal circuits. Um, you know, the Tenth Circuit stands somewhere in the middle, I would say. But I would say in a case like this, which is really unusual, where you have a Supreme Court ruling and then you have the administration turning around in less than a year and implementing something that appears to go directly against that ruling, it's so brazen that in any circuit, this case should prevail, including in the Ninth Circuit. Excuse me, am I, as a taxpayer, paying the cost of this litigation that you are undertaking on behalf of America? Well, not really. You're not paying any extra cost because uh, we're doing this with uh, personnel who are already part of the Kansas Attorney General's office. Well, we're not we're hiring. We're not hiring an outside law firm. Guys are doing other well, we're making them do that work too. They're uh, they're very busy. This is a special day for you, Mr. Davis. You mentioned that memo. Yes. It should already be attached. I think we are issuing a press release right now, and so it should be attached, or a link to it should be attached to that press release. And you can also, if you're on PACER, it was filed in the District Court of Kansas, Federal District Court for the District of Kansas. And the, the title of the case is uh, State of Kansas and Others versus uh, Joseph R. Biden uh, and Others. You all, um, you, you mentioned
six of us tonight. And you mentioned that fear and the point of acceptance, but does does it matter given what you are arguing, what the cost is that the point is is that Congress has to impose that? Um, in one sense, it, your your suggestion is correct that it wouldn't matter if if this is if this is all decided by the major questions doctrine, then it wouldn't matter what the exact dollar amount of the student forgiveness is, other than it is large, because the major questions doctrine says that when there is a major issue of public policy and the larger the dollar amount means the you know the the, the more major or significant the question is, uh, so the dollar amount measures insofar as it is large, but as to the very specific amount. One of the reasons we bring that uh, to the attention of the court in our lawsuit, John, is that uh, under the Administrative Procedure Act, uh, an administrative agency is required to very precisely calculate the costs and benefits uh, of a program, of an administrative program before moving forward. Here they haven't bothered to uh, accurately calculate the costs. Well, uh, a case like this sometimes moves on what is called the Supreme Court's emergency docket, where a lower court rules on a preliminary injunction motion, and then a court of appeals rules on an appeal of that preliminary injunction decision, and then sometimes the case moves directly to the Supreme Court without a final judgment in the court below. That might happen in this case, but I also suspect that if the court of appeals, where this case probably will land before long, uh, if the Court of Appeals were to rule in the state's favor, the Supreme Court might very well say, okay, we'll let that decision stand. There's no need for us to take it. So um, I think it could move quickly to the U.S. Supreme Court. But when I say quickly, of course, <laughs> that means relatively slowly uh, in terms of what most people think of as in terms of fast. Um, you know, the, the U.S. Supreme Court um, will be shutting down in June. This case won't even, wouldn't even get to the Tenth Circuit until at the very earliest um, – late summer, and uh, it takes the Court of Appeals, even on an expedited basis, several months to rule. And so, you know, seeing this get to the U.S. Supreme Court before the end of the year would be highly unlikely, but possible. Is, are, how quickly do you think you, I mean, obviously you're probably going to make that same, the argument to the U.S. Supreme Court is in its, is it harm? And, and, and it's, and it's, and it's rolling too. So right. the sooner so an injunction. Yeah, and, and we will be asking the court for a preliminary injunction. Uh, we hope that the court can act with uh, relative dispatch and, and issue one fairly quickly, but that, of course, will be up to the court. Um, that's an interesting question. I haven't uh, calculated that. Anyone want to uh, venture a guess? <laughs> We don't have a tally sheet. We don't have a we, we don't have a, uh, a scoreboard on the wall. I would guess we've uh, certainly signed on to uh, I would say well over ten cases by now. Um, it, it well some of them are um, comment letters in anticipation of the case. So an agency says they're going to do this in a proposed rule. We sign a comment letter. The comment letter is a signal to the administration that we will sue. And then when the agency promulgates a final rule, the suit happens. So if you count those as cases we're signing on to, it, it would certainly be closer to 20. Any, any kind of formal one-off like a parade? Do you, mean, uh, you know what? The, uh, what do we got? Well, I, no, we haven't calculated that. But I, I would note that Kansas was one of the original six states that defeated the Biden administration in court in 2023. Uh, so I guess you could count that as one of our wins. But we've had other situations, like you may have heard we uh, – issued a letter uh, criticizing the New York Stock Exchange for attempting to implement a rule that has to be approved by the SEC that would create nat uh, natural asset companies that could be bought and sold, and basically you're selling the opportunity to lock up land. We said that was inconsistent with federal law, and, and that was a letter that Kansas led, and the New York Stock Exchange backed down and said, okay, we won't do it. So that is a, a victory that was won without a lawsuit. Um, so we have, you know, in, in many instances, jumped in as the state taking the lead. In other cases, we have allowed the other states to take the lead. Does Biden want to give all nervous about this and go forward? I, uh, I, I wonder how much Biden is aware of uh, day, on a day-to-day -day basis that the Justice Department is engaged in. Maybe they'll tell him. I don't know.
speaking of the uh, workforce question earlier, having the resources to handle this change, and we're in the state house, the legislature has considered other bills that would uh, require more work, more staffing at your office, any update on the uh, filling of the vacancies and how you deal and handle some of those other new tasks with the legislature in general? Yeah, so when I took office, there were approximately 25 attorney vacancies we have filled the majority of those. I, I had it in my statement to the relevant legislative committee earlier. I think we have filled approximately 17, I guess, uh, maybe 15 or 17 of those. Um, so we still have some vacancies. Uh, it's a tough hiring environment right now, and we are hiring quality people wherever we can find them. And because we have so many vacancies, we can hire the person with talent and then find one of the empty places for them to fill. So that's really what we're doing right now. Uh, we've been blessed to have uh, a number of really great attorneys, uh, two of whom, well, of course, the, the Solicitor General is one too, but two, two young attorneys who are standing behind me uh, who are of exceptional uh, talent and caliber, and they have come in and have sk a skill set that's ideal for this type of litigation, but they're also involved in other cases. So, for example, defending Kansas laws is uh, in the, you know, the wheelhouse. It's in the basket of things that every Attorney General's office does. And they're also engaged in, in some of the defense of, of state, state of Kansas law, too. So, Bob, are you concerned about the follow-up to that? The legislature is having their expertise in this. They're adding uh, responsibility to your office and getting filled. I, I think you said they can now monitor your welfare or something. So, we, we, uh, so we are keeping track of that. We, we are keeping track of that, and we have asked the legislative committees if they are going to give our office uh, more jobs to do. We are willing and, and happy to accept those uh, responsibilities, but we are asking them to give us more funding so that we can hire more attorneys to do the work. We, and I have you know, notified them many times that it's a, it's a tough hiring environment right now. It's a, it's a good time to be coming out of law school uh, because it's, it's, there are not enough attorneys to fill the many jobs that a state needs done. Yeah, the, the reason why was that the 11th Circuit uh, of the U.S. Court of Appeals recently issued a ruling on a preliminary injunction motion uh, where they uh, ruled against Florida's law, which contains language very similar to the, uh, the House version of the plan. I'm not saying it's impossible to defend, but I'm saying uh, the Senate version of the plan would be 100% defensible, and I would feel much more confident going into court defending that one. What, what is the deal? Do I have one more question? How did you feel about your bill getting signed in the Senate today? Um, I, my understanding is that they were going to try to work these, since it had already been heard by the committee that it was conferenceable, and they, they would try to hopefully uh, work out some of these issues in conference. My understanding is that the issue is going to a conference committee anyway, as I suggested in my statement to the press. General, so are you saying nobody in the student loan has received money from the governor on payment to pay at all? Well, they don't, as you know, you, when, you, when a loan is forgiven, you don't receive money directly. You, the, the loan is just canceled, and you have, to, you have to stop paying money. But, you, but it is a recept, you are give, being given funds by the federal government, effectively. Um, my understanding is that letters have already been going out under version 2.0 of the Biden student loan forgiveness plan, uh, where people are receiving letters telling them that their loan is canceled, they have nothing, nothing left to repay. And they have confirmed that in the state of Kansas, uh, I don't remember the dollar figure exactly. Uh, let me ask Abby, do you know, do you remember off the top of your head? 10 million? Mm -hmm. $10 million worth uh, has already been forgiven. According to them, you can check with the Department of Education. And okay. can that be reversed then or not? Uh, yes, it can be. Uh, and, and that is, would be the appropriate thing, yeah. All right, thank you everyone. If you have more questions, please direct them to our office. All right, thank you, appreciate it.